Welcome to uh, Paint Night. Uh, my name is Simon Brockape. I'm from Gideon Zibi. I'm an Anishinaabe artist. Uh, I'm welcoming you to uh, my studio here in Ottawa. And uh, I'm looking forward to this evening. Uh, we're going to be painting a red Algonquin moose. And I, I just did a sketch here of it. Uh, and uh, there's a model back here. This uh, moose uh, is a sculpture here in Ottawa at Pimacy Station. Uh, it just went up uh, last year. I'm uh, quite excited about it. It's uh, about three meters high or around 16 feet. And uh, you can see it when you're on the uh, Pimacy Station. So this evening, uh, we're going to paint uh, a moose. Uh, I'm calling it a red moose, but if you got other paints and your favorite color is green or blue, you can do it whatever color you want. Um, we're going to prepare the uh, canvas. Uh, so to prepare the canvas, um, I'm doing a very simple uh, process. I'm mixing um, white paint. And I've got a, uh, a saucer here. And if you're at home, you can uh, you can use a saucer if you want to uh, re repurpose it later. I'm mixing a tiny bit. Whoops, I I'm too anxious about the uh, the red. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, yellow in it, and that'll just give it a get away from the stark white. But I'm just putting a couple of drops in there because uh, yellow. Yeah, on with mixing with white uh, gets um, quite yellow. So you can see um, I'm mixing. Well, there you go. That's too much yellow. That's uh, getting a little bit better. This is uh, acrylic paint that you can get anywhere here in Ottawa. You can get it at the dollar store. With uh, acrylic paint, you can mix it with. Um, with water, uh, but not too much water. Um, I have a friend of mine uh, who was a starving artist when he was younger, and he mixed too much water in it, and uh, some of his paintings got crinkly, cracks in it. Uh, so we don't want that. So I'm, I'm just using a, um, a paper towel. I'm gonna put a little bit of water on the paper towel. And then I'm just blending it in the background. Um, if you're trying to finish your your mousse this evening, what I would do is, hopefully you would have uh, prepared your canvas earlier with a background. I'll show you how I'm doing it. So I'm just rubbing it in. The beautiful thing about art is that when you're doing it, time seems to go flying by. Uh, they think it's because we're using both sides of our brain, our left, our creative side and our analytical side. So there we go. So I've covered the whole background. And if you want to get a little fancy and do a few other things with the background, you can uh, write your name in there. I'm going to write my name, Simon, like that. Or you can uh, draw things in the background like that. Uh, you don't have to do it, but um, you could. So uh, you'll, you're going to have a red moose uh, on... Um, on this canvas and the next step is to do a quick sketch of a moose now I know a lot of you uh, aren't uh, uh, used to sketching you, there's a, um, a, a sketch or an image in the materials that we provided you that you can download um, off the off the website 
And uh, one of the things that I, I encourage you to do is uh, not to do it too um, too dark, because the uh, the pencil mark will come through the uh, the red when you go to do the red. Uh, I'm going to have to do it a little on the dark side uh, just so that uh, I'm you can see it uh, at home. So uh, I've prepared another canvas, and remember our sketch. So what I try to do when I sketch, and, and it's almost like your signature, uh, your ability to, to draw and sketch, is you try to maintain a, a nice smooth line. So I've been drawing for many years, so it's a lot easier for me uh, to do that. They say you, you need 10,000 hours to become an expert at anything. And um, so I'm sketching out the entire moose on the canvas. I like those, like the little chin thing that the moose has. And uh, the uh, feet that I put in uh, is interesting. Uh, I, uh, for some reason, that's how I did the, uh, uh, the feet. Uh, but I've looked at some old um, signatures on on uh, treaties, and Algonquin chiefs uh, did that. So I'm I'm not sure. What what I like to see is uh, in there is I'm I'm seeing like a sky dome. It's like the world that we live, and then there's the spirit world, and uh, the moose is touching the ground, uh, and in this case we've got three beautiful sky domes. He's got a tail, and the, and the moose have uh, kind of rough, rough-looking backs. They got these smooth shapes in their backs, and I use I don't try to draw a moose antler like you would see on a on a uh, a real moose. Uh, my moose are spirit moose, and the uh, the antlers remind me of uh, leaves on a tree, so you can see the leaves, and it, and it's uh, the idea is that uh, all, what we call all our relations that we're, we're we are as human beings related and connected to everything around us, including the animals. Uh, we we share a lot of the same chromosomes with animals, and even plants. I think a lot of plants. About 18% of our chromosomes uh, we share with uh, plants, and um, so that that uh, re reinforces the idea that uh, we're uh, we're all connected. The uh, the moose that you see over here is made out of steel, and there's uh, uh, some birds on there in there. So we're back telling the uh, the moose story. So. Uh, uh, my uh, my my father, uh, as he got older, would would tell me more stories. Uh, when we were young, he would uh, uh, say things to us uh, like, uh, you know, if you're out uh, collecting medicine, don't pick the first medicine because it might be the last. And uh, so he, he had a lot of instructive uh, uh, philosophical ideas uh, about the natural world. Uh, I used to love to hear him telling stories about uh, hunting, but uh, he told me uh, a story about uh, hunting moose with my uh, uncle Cyril. And my uncle Cyril was this uh, amazing uh, hunter. They, they were up in uh, a park just north of Gidigan Zibi, north of Manawaki. And uh, it, it was in November and it just snowed. And my... Uh, uh, uncle and my dad were sitting in their truck, I think probably eating a bologna sandwich for breakfast. And uh, they got out of their truck and a couple of uh, whiskey jacks flew by and uh, settled near them. Uh, those of you who uh, go camping or spend time in the woods 
know that uh, whiskey jacks will hang around your uh, your campsite. So my uh, uncle talks to the uh, whiskey jacks in Al Algonquin and says, I could kill you, but I won't. I want you to bring me back a moose. So my father and uh, uncle sat there all day uh, finishing up their bologna sandwiches. And just as the sun was starting to settle, uh, the whiskey jacks come flying back. My dad said uh, he could see them over the hill and they were on the, on these uh, old uh, timber roads and following them was a moose. It was just an unbelievable, beautiful moose hunting story. Anyways, uh, uh, hopefully you've uh, sketched out your, your moose on your canvas and you're uh, ready to paint. So we're going to use uh, uh, red paint. Uh, I've got some red paint here. And if you remember earlier, I, I, I was uh, dipping into the uh, red paint uh, before I should have. And uh, remember that uh, we can use a little bit of uh, water with it. So I'm mixing, uh, uh, putting red paint here. So you can use any kind of brush uh, that you want. Uh, 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 Norval Morriso, uh, the uh, famous uh, Ojibwa artist, uh, used to uh, use his finger. And I think the... Uh, the, uh, that tradition came from our ancestors uh, around the uh, uh, around Algonquin territory are these beautiful uh, uh, rock paintings uh, all through the territory and uh, they would use uh, uh, this uh, red paint that they would uh, grind up uh, from rock uh, and uh, iron, uh, it was an iron ore uh, rock embedded in it, embedded it into the uh, rock, and they would grind it, grind it into uh, this beautiful uh, red paint. And then they uh, would mix uh, the, the red paint with uh, bear fat or fish oil. Uh, which would have been plenty in those days. I tried to, um, uh, you can see here, I, I tried to uh, keep the lines uh, smooth. Uh, if you're a beginner painter, what I would do is it was, it just take my time in uh, painting it. A little bit at a time. It looks pretty simple for me and I've got a flat brush here so I could turn it sideways to paint the pointy sides but I'm sure you're all experienced painters from doing uh, paint nights And, and don't really try to stick to the line too much. Uh, another secret is, uh, uh, and don't try to do this now, is you, you try to paint with your whole body. Um, there, there was this painter that used splatter paint, if you uh, uh, remember going to uh, the National Gallery, and he would drip, drip the paint um, on the uh, on the canvas, and uh, he became quite famous for that. He he was uh, uh, inspired by uh, Navajo uh, sand painters, but anyway, so uh, uh, people thought that they could forge his uh, his paintings 
But then somebody figured out that he used uh, his body motion and his arm motion and uh, uh, it, it was a pattern that no one else could copy. So they were able to tell the difference between a, a forged uh, Jackson Pollock uh, and a real one. The other thing he did was he smoked and, it, and he would, uh, you know, those little paper uh, uh, matches. Um, I saw one of his paintings in uh, a gallery in, in Buffalo, New York. And the trick was to try to find uh, the Jackson Pollock uh, matchstick embedded in these paintings. So nobody will be able to forge your painting. I'm actually doing better when I'm talking, <laughs> when I'm painting. So normally when we do these uh, paint nights, uh, when we do them live, well, we're doing them live today, but... Um, uh, with, with people around, there's always laughing, gossiping. Uh, so you can do that at home uh, without me being there. Okay, so I've got the, the body done. And uh, I'm going to start working on the uh, antlers. So if your paint is going, I haven't really mixed my paint properly here, but um, the water will help it thin it out and go on smoother. So I'm going to play around a little bit more with this sketch. I'm going to um, make the... Um, lines a little bit thicker. Anyway, so I, got, I have to tell you about uh, installing the uh, the Red Algonquin Moose at Pimacy Station because it's quite exciting. So the uh, the moose is made out of uh, out of steel, and if you get up really close to it, you can see my uh, signature, which I, uh, I I welded into the uh, into the moose. When I, when I was younger, I, I my father was an iron worker, and I worked in the summer with him, and uh, uh, I learned how to weld. And so I told uh, Mike, who uh, runs the uh, the workshop, that uh, I knew how to weld. But uh, when we actually, when I actually went to weld, in the old days we used uh, these welding sticks, and today it's all done using electric welding sticks. Anyways, I was able to uh, weld my name in there. But the the uh, the moose weighs uh, several tons, and uh, to install it, we had to um, use the largest uh, uh, crane available in Ottawa. And uh, it looked pretty small when we were installing it. Uh, it's uh, it's got a base in there that's about uh, 
half the height, maybe eight feet concrete base uh, with with steel reinforced rods that hold up the moose, which you, which you can actually see when you go uh, have a look at it. The engineer, because I, I was saying, uh, what if somebody comes over there and pushes it over? Don't try it. Um, he said you could you could run into it with a truck and it won't get knocked over. So when you do these sculptures, and this is red, it's a red sculpture. Uh, doing a red sculpture is risky for a couple of reasons. One is uh, the paint, red paint, uh, uh, fades over time. There's a couple of red sculptures here in Ottawa, so I um, the there was one in the uh, Dow's Lake Park there, and um, it's on NCC property. So I, I got a hold of NCC, found out uh, who the artist was contacted the artists but a lot of the work uh, was research was done by my wife Carol she found um, uh, a red epoxy resin uh, which is used on uh, these uh, oil rigs so if you can imagine uh, you know you need a paint that's going to uh, withstand salt water the Sun uh, wind get beat anyway so we we used uh, a red epoxy resin uh, I just love I love red I don't know why but um, elders say that red represents life for for obvious reasons so uh, we didn't uh, paint the uh, the moose wasn't painted until it was put on place put uh, in the grounds at Pimacy uh, Station. So uh, you, this red epoxy paint uh, you have to uh, mix it. So we mixed it. You have an hour, half an hour to apply it. Uh, so I. It was applied with uh, with rollers, and we did a couple couple of layers. W one of the other problems is, you know, when you're transporting something like a red sculpture, that uh, you could. Um, I, I got paint on my shirt, anyways. Uh, so. It could get damaged in in transit, so that's why we painted it on site. So I've been painting, uh, drawing and painting moose for decades, actually, and uh, I uh, I had a show in Quebec City. And there was an elder there, and um, I, I hadn't cho I didn't choose my words uh, carefully. So he goes, "Oh, I just love this moose." Uh, I did a moose painting, and I said, uh, "I've been working on that for a couple of years because uh, the moose are so ugly that." Um, um, it took me that long to to come up with a, a um, an image that, that I liked. And he, he tore strips off me. He says, what do you mean they're ugly? They're the most beautiful animals in the world. They, uh, they, they uh, live on land. Uh, they, can, uh, they have hollow hoofs because they can go through the, the swamps. No other animal can do that. They can swim. Uh, they're perfectly... Uh, adapt it uh, for the environment. Anyways, he told me, um, and uh, our, our ancestors 
and uh, uh, present day Algonquins have a deep reverence for the moose. Uh, when moose hunting season came, and it, uh, my my father would be complaining about uh, people disrespecting moose by uh, putting the uh, moose heads on their trucks and driving through town. Uh, you, you won't see a an Anishinaabe or an indigenous person doing that because uh, they have too much respect uh, for animals in the natural world. So I encourage you to go over to Pimbasi, uh when it's safe to do so. And have a look at it and you can say you could compare the moose that you're painting tonight with the Pimacy uh, Red Algonquin moose. I'm almost finished you can see uh, a little bit more. Now what a lot of artists will do is they'll paint a thin coat of paint and then go over it over and over again. I have a cousin, Erwin uh, uh, Printup, and uh, that's what he does. He does uh, uh, layers of paint and very thin. And when you look at it, you don't see the, well, of course, you're going to see brush strokes here. Uh, but what I should do here is I should go over it again. So those of you who have registered for paint night or, or have downloaded this on uh, the um, onto your computer and you're doing this uh, uh, I've got a uh, I'm going to sign it with this red hopefully this works oh it does work so we have a finished painting uh, the red moose you know all about moose now uh, and uh, hope you enjoyed uh, painting uh, this evening as much as I did uh, those of who those of you who have registered uh, uh, th through uh, uh, the website uh, can email me uh, your name or uh, yeah email me your name or no here's what we'll do everybody that's registered we will uh, draw your name and uh, mail this uh, beautiful uh, painting uh, to your home anyway so uh, enjoy your evening enjoy the uh, festival uh, at home uh, and uh, stay safe and uh, hope your family and community are well. Miigwech.